Now we're going to talk about blocks and grid and so on. We're going to look at the thread hierarchy. So uh, you've seen this magic thread index, which we somehow obtained from somewhere, which uh, enables us to give out uh, uh, the ID of a single thread. Understanding how Alpaca works with indices or thread indices is more or less the key to understanding Alpaca, because then you will have understood how you can navigate across the uh, thread grid that is spanned across your problem, how you can form thread blocks and why you should do it. And you will understand the relations between threads, blocks and the grid. And you will also see or learn how to compute thread indices yourself. So we've talked about threads and the grid before, and uh, in Apaka, a grid consists of all the threads executing the same kernel. This means that for every kernel execution, there's exactly one grid. The threads can be distributed along one, two, or three dimensions. So this is up to you, whatever fits your problem best. You can uh, work on 1D, 2D, or 3D problems. And each thread on the grid is identified by its unique index. We typically, typically call this grid thread index in Alpaca. All the threads across the grid can communicate through global memory. This is quite large, but it also has a high latency. So access to this type of memory is quite slow. Also threads, the threads are all running in parallel as we have seen in the previous slide set, but they actually can't be synchronized. This is why you should use thread blocks. Uh, you can group, uh, group the threads into individual blocks and all blocks on the same grid have to have the same size. Blocks on different grids can have different sizes, but on the same grid, they all have to be equal. Each block on the grid also has its own unique index, which we usually call grid block index. And each thread inside a block is identified by its block local unique index, which we call block thread index. This means that a thread actually has two unique indices, one for the entire grid and one inside the block. This also means that threads in different blocks may have the same local block index. Inside a block, threads can communicate through shared memory. This is typically very small, but is very, very fast because it has very low latency. So a shared memory can be viewed as a programmable cache, so to say. Also, threads inside a block can be synchronized, which means that you can insert a barrier somewhere where all threads will halt until all threads have reached the barrier and only then continue on after the barrier. So how do we obtain the thread indices? There are several API functions for that. So we, uh, there's an API function for, uh, uh, for obtaining the index of the thread on the grid for obtaining the index of a thread on the block and also for obtaining the uh, index of a block on the grid. In the same fashion, there is a way to ask for the number of threads on the grid or the number of threads on the block and also for the number of blocks on the grid. So as an exercise for you to do at home or do right now in the Hello World example, uh, I would like you to compute the index of a thread on the grid yourself by using a combination of the remaining indices in extents. If you uh, are having trouble with this, don't worry. In our uh, example directory, we also have the solution for this. This is in the hello world underscore lesson 16 uh, source code. So in the, in the kernel of that hello world version, we have uh, demonstrated how to calculate the index of the thread on the grid in code. Okay, um, that's it. Are there any questions regarding the indices? Um, do you provide a utility to uh, compute a linear index of a thread on the grid, uh, which is convenient when you have uh, buffers of incoming data, which are linear? No, I actually don't know that. Maybe I could take that. Maybe take that. Okay, so yeah. that's, that's a good question and a common pattern that we also uh, face. That's why uh, we did do provide a function to linearize a multi-dimensional indices. It's given in the cheat sheet. So on the cheat sheet, if you go into the section for kernel implementation, it has uh -huh. functions to access 
like vector indices, and then there is an example of how to linearize it. Uh, where is it? I, I got, let, let me give you a link on the. I will put the link on the chat. Okay. Thank you.